Do you want to learn how you can automate the process of testing when you're trying to deploy your serverless project? In this video, that is exactly what we're going to learn how to do. Hi guys, my name is Sam with Complete Coding, where our aim is to make you into the best developer you can be. If you haven't done it already, please make sure to subscribe down here so you stay up to date with the latest serverless things. In this video, we're going to be looking at automating the testing process so that when you deploy, your tests automatically run. In the last two videos, we've made some integration tests and some unit tests. And now adding those into the deployment process makes your production environment more stable. This is because if you've made a change in your code, which has caused an error or a bug, your tests are going to run, they're going to fail, and your project is not going to deploy. This means you never end up deploying code that has bugs if you've thoroughly tested your project. If you do try and deploy your project and it fails, you can then go in and fix the bug, or it might be that your functionality has changed, therefore you need to update your tests and let any of your users know about the change to the functionality in your API. Now that we're in the code, we can look at how we can set up adding the scripts to run during the SLS deployment process. We're going to be using another plugin called the serverless plugin scripts. So what we can do is scroll down to our plugins list and add a new plugin called the serverless plugin dash scripts. I'm also going to copy this as we need to npm install, save this to our dev dependencies, and we can paste in the serverless plugin scripts. Whilst this is working, I will go through what we need to set up so that these scripts run. Inside our custom, we need to add some new configuration. At the base of custom, so in line with these other parameters, we need a new variable called scripts. So this plugin allows you to do a couple of things. You can add custom scripts, so you can run something like SLS test to run jest, but we want to actually be able to hook into the deployment process itself so we need to use hooks. These hooks are defined by the lifecycle events that are emitted when you're doing a serverless deploy. And there are a list of them, which I will put a link in the description for where you can find all of our different events. We want to do one that is pre-deploy. So we want to do it at the stage where we're validating that the CloudFormation template is correct. We also want to test our code and make sure that there are no known issues. To do that, we are going to be using the validate lifecycle event, which is AWS colon common colon validate colon validate. So this is saying that when AWS is validating our CloudFormation template, we can run our script. The script that we want to run is Jest, but as we've done in other previous videos, we actually need to also add the table name environment variable. So table name equals and we can copy the table name from our custom variables and then run jest. 
this is actually all we need to do so that when we are running the validation, it's as if we ran this first. So if we go into our terminal and now run SLS deploy, what we'll see is that when it is about to deploy, it is running those test suites. I've not done anything extra. I've just run SLS deploy, which when it's validating has run these tests. I'm actually going to kill this suite so that we don't actually deploy. What we can do now is we can have a go at breaking one of the tests and seeing what happens now. So if I go into Dynamo unit test and I create a new test, and I call this should fail, And this is going to be a really simple unit test where I'm going to expect false to be true. Obviously, this is going to fail. But what we could have done is we could have actually changed the code in Dynamo or in API responses so that it failed one of the unit tests or changed the code inside our endpoints so that our integration tests failed. If any of those changes did happen and one of the existing tests failed, it would have exactly the same effect as what I'm doing here. Now that we have a test that we know should fail, we are going to run SLS deploy again and see what happens now. So I'm going to make the terminal a bit bigger. And obviously, this hasn't finished running. And if you scroll up, it says that there was an error in the command table name player points table jest, which is the command that we have defined in this plugin. And if we scroll up, we can see that should fail has failed, unsurprisingly and it's shown us exactly what has failed. All of the other test suites have passed. So this is the only thing to have failed. This now means if I do actually make a change to my Dynamo code or to my create player score code that changes the way that it works, it will no longer be able to deploy without being fixed first. That could be fixing the test or fixing the code that is causing the test to fail. In this video, we have looked at how we can add our tests into our SLS deployment process. This is great because it automatically runs the tests so that you will never deploy code that does not pass your tests. You can also use this plugin to do more things. So not just before you deploy, but after you deploy, you could also run a commit script or something similar to that. If you've liked this video, please make sure to give it a like as it helps the YouTube algorithm suggest it to more other developers just like yourselves. And if you haven't done already, please subscribe down here so that you get updated the next time I submit a YouTube video. Thank you, and I'll see you again next time.